guys, I'm Chris Buck and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks. This week we've got a fair amount to get through as it is a comprehensive walkthrough of my new pedal board. Now in case you haven't seen that pedal show from last week, I'll stick a link above and in the description box below. Please do check that out. It's myself and Dan and Mick putting together this board, wiring it up and hearing my reaction and seeing my reaction more importantly for the first time using a wet dry rig. It's a little bit different to this video. This video, the intention of which is just to talk you through some of the kind of thought process as I guess between the pedal choices in lieu of some of the questions that we had in the comment section on TPS and also how I've come to set the pedals and combinations I've been using since I put the board together. So uh, if you haven't seen that pedal show video already do go check that out but this is just sort of part two to that video I guess. So uh, as I said we've got a lot to get through so let's delve right in. So before we get too heavily into pedals, uh, it's probably going to be worth giving a quick mention to my clean tone. At present, the uh, signal chain is running into the right-hand side of the board. The only pedal which is currently on is the Chariot Tone Centura, uh, that clone clone underneath the hood actually, we'll get to that in a minute, running out of the left-hand side of the board and directly into guitar rig. Um, it's worth mentioning that although this board can be configured to run wet-dry, at present it's running fully wet. Guitar rig wasn't really maximizing the, uh, the benefits, shall we say, of wet-dry. Right. And besides, if you want to hear that in all of its splendor, please go check out uh, that week's, uh, the last week's That Pedal Show, uh, which is pretty much as good a demonstration of uh, the benefits of wet dry. But um, as I said, clean tone with just the Cherry Tone Centura on sounds a little bit like this. <laughs> So the first pedal that the guitar is actually going to see within the board itself um, is actually the Grace Tone FF01 Fuzz. Now this is very much based on Fuzz Face style circuit um, and is pretty much as close as I've been able to get to my old Dallas Arbiter um, Dennis Cornell Fuzz Face from the early 90s. Fantastic sounding pedal but just hideously impractical and hideously temperamental as well to be honest. Very receptive to temperature changes and just a little unreliable, you know, overall. Guys at Gracetone have nailed that sound pretty much, but um, without any of the quirks or sort of uh, idiosyncrasy, should we say, be kind to uh, an older pedal. In isolation, sounds a little bit like this. <laughs> stacked there with the analog mount king of tone it's pretty much my sort of core fuzz tone there if i'm going to be using the fuzz pedal don't very often use it in isolation but um anyway let's move to the underside of the board so at first glance um there's a lot going on but it's fairly utility to be honest a lot of it is actually based around the power and then we've got a couple of pedals which obviously are accessed via the g2 on top so don't need to be accessed uh, by your feet so just to give you an overview, we've got the gig rig uh, generator, distributors, isolators, doublers, time lords, etc. The modular power system that the gig rig makes. Utterly brilliant, wouldn't uh, use anything else for versatility and reliability at this point. Also have the gig rig humdinger, which if we're running it as a wet dry rig is absolutely essential. Uh, that basically splits the signal. In regard to pedals then, we've obviously got the uh, Cherry Tone Centura at the top, the clone clone. We've got the Analog Man King Atone. Uh, Kali 76 by Origin Effects compressor and then on the top right we've got the VS Audio Straight Flush um, and as I said all of those pedals are then controlled by the G2 on top so let's go back topside. So in regards to the G2, um, it's currently set up in stomp box mode. Um, it's pretty much all my brain can handle at this point. This is an absolutely incredible bit of kit, which no doubt does uh, infinitely more than my brain will ever be able to handle. But at this particular point in time, as that light there um, denotes, it is in stomp box mode, uh, which basically means you know a switch per pedal. So if we run from left to right in order of the loops, in loop number one, we have what is labeled as BBX. And that is the Marshall Blues Breaker, in essence, the Snouse Black Box that I pointed to uh, underneath a minute ago. 
Um, it's a fantastic sounding pedal. Again, very much uh, in the same kind of way that Greystone have taken a design and improved it and got rid of the quirks. Uh, Joshua at Snouse has taken an old Marshall Blues Breaker, removed any of the kind of little uh, sort of idiosyncrasies again, shall we say, that you get with that pedal, and made it a more modern day reliable equivalent. So um, sounds a little bit like this. It's worth mentioning at this point also that pretty much whenever I'm using Overdrive, I will have the Kali 76 on by Origin FX. Um, pretty much exclusively with single colors, to be honest, but it's just a kind of little comfort blanket. Sounds fantastic. It's one of those things that you don't necessarily notice it's on until you turn it off, at which point you are vastly lacking in something that you had before. So um, let's flick that on with the BBX and then go back and forth between the King of Tone and VS Audio, hopefully which will answer some of the questions in regard of why I have so many Bluesbreaker inspired overdrives. <laughs> Dan Steinhardt pretty much hit the nail on the head infinitely more eloquently than I ever would have been able to um, in Monday's episode of VCQ in regards to why I do have so many Marshall Bluesbreaker inspired pedals. And the answer is pretty much I found a pedal or a type of pedal that I like and then run with different variations. And as much as the topology may have initially started as relatively similar with the Black Box, King of Tone and the VS Audio, they do sound wildly different and as such stack incredibly nicely given there is a kind of common theme running throughout them I guess. Um, really do like that and as you saw then the black box the Cali 76 and the King of Tone and then maybe the Hello Sailor for a solo boost it's pretty much 95% of my solo tone throughout Black and Evans set so um, yeah it's cool combinations moving on to loop number 5 we have the Thorpey Gunshot as I mentioned on that pedal show this tends to get more use as a um, kind of high again pedal I guess with Rev Stars but given it is a strat I'm holding we'll, uh, we'll do some strat work with it and it sounds a little bit like this It's a lovely sounded overdrive. Um, speaking of Adrian Thorpe recently, actually, he's going to stick that in the V2 enclosure, which is slightly smaller, which will uh, give me space for more pedals, which is clearly what I need at this point. Moving on to loop number six, the Talk of the Town, the Hello Sailor Range Master. Um, talk of the Town being, uh, for two reasons, as far as I can see in the comments on TPS, A, how good it sounds, and B, why as a Range Master it doesn't necessarily have to be first in the uh, chain. Rage Masters, again, like fuzz pedals, notoriously picky about what they see and when they see it. Um, and as far as my understanding would have it, no doubt Joe from Hello Sailor will be able to chime in with an infinitely more erudite explanation as to why it doesn't have to be first. But as far as I would understand it is because there is a clone buffer at the uh, front end of the pedal, 
which basically allows it to play nicely with other other toys. So um, you heard that in conjunction with uh, the King of Tone and the Cali 76 on the black box earlier. Um, just to whack the Cali 76 back on and give you an on and off example of the Hello Sailor. <laughs> Pretty much a full range boost um, with a little bit of hair uh, controlled by the control on the right hand side. Obviously we've got that toggle switch as well for cutting bass and stuff. Don't really get into that too much to be honest, it sounds pretty good straight out the box. Um, moving on to loop number seven, we have the rotary reverb. I've uh, been using this for a good while now, it's pretty much a do it all um, sort of modulation pedal I guess. Um, set a little bit strangely at the moment, so if we dial the reverb back, bring in a little bit of uh, chorus I think. Let's have a look see what that sounds like. It's a great little pedal, incredibly versatile, and does a very convincing uh, chorus, rotary, and vibrato. Again, that really comes to life with the wet-dry setup, but um, just covers quite a lot of bases for a relatively small enclosure. Moving on to the um, tremolo, Supro Harmonic Tremolo. Now, more than often than not, I'm gonna be giving this a workout in its harmonic, harmonic tremolo mode, I should say but also worth pointing out that it does have a fantastic normal amplitude tremolo mode in it as well, which gets a bit of use in a couple of Buck and Emmons tracks. Um, I can't quite see how it's set at the moment, so let's turn it on and see what we've got. Really cool vibey pedal that stacks particularly well with uh, more kind of ambient delay. So if we click the uh, Dawn of Prince Echo Rec, or Buna I should say, on, let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> Really a lovely pet that is uh, slowly creeping into a lot of rhythm parts, sort of subtle chord work within the background, within the band. Um, giving you a quick demonstration of the Boona there, pretty much for a lot of the stuff it gets used for, sort of ambient washes, a lot of stuff going on underneath the solos. The last pedal definitely worth mentioning, however, is gonna be the Catlin Brand Echo Rack, which is currently off. And also worth mentioning, shares a loop with a Supro delay. Uh, reason being, we've run out of loops, but given the Supro is very accessible, as is the Echo Rack, thought it wouldn't be too bad if they shared a loop and I could turn either on or off as uh, needs required. The Echo Rec, however, um, to answer a question in regard to why so many Echo Rec style delays, the Catlin Bread basically handles any specific delay parts, um, like the midsection of Slow Train is the one I've used as an example countless times, so I'll play that one more time. <laughs> Thank you. 
So that paddle, paddle, that pedal handles very specific parts, whereas the Buna Echo Rack tends to do the stuff which is more, as I said, more gill, more kind of ambient wash underneath solos. So um, very different tasks. Also worth mentioning quickly, the uh, Supro Delay, which is set for a very kind of uh, straight up sort of uh, slap back for solos. Really cool Vibe delay pedal that actually has a great function in being able to control the uh, basically the EQ of the uh, repeats without filter control. So if you want it very bright or very kind of pristine digital, you can. Or if you want it very dark, a little bit more tape inspired, you can roll it back and get um, get something that's not going to get in the way too much. Um, in regards to the other pedals um, or the other kind of controls, we've got that which only comes in useful when you are running the wet dry. And the reason it has red uh, tape all around it is to remind the idiots operating it that it has to be on. Um, as I found out at the first gear, I was running the wet dry, which uh, confused me a little bit. Um, in regards to these two, we have what will eventually be presets. Um, so Dan Steinhardt set those up for me and I would be lying if I said it didn't confuse the hell out of me for a little bit. So I've actually wiped those for the time being. And then last, but very not much not least, the most important pedal on the board, the tuner. Um, obviously mutes everything and uh, makes sure that I don't sound absolutely terrible. So in regard to the board, that's pretty much it, to be honest. Um, as I said, it's there's a lot happening and there is not a lot happening at the same time. It's This has been a case of trying to whittle it down and get back to back to basics a little bit. A um, couple of you watching who no doubt don't use pedals will be uh, slightly surprised by that. But if you saw the last board, it was a little bit more of a kind of... Uh, yeah, behemoth than this, which has been a case of trying to whittle it down to the stuff that I definitely need, or definitely feel that I need for a Buck and Evans set. So, uh, yeah, there you go. So there you have it. As I said, it's a fair amount to get through, but um, it's infinitely simpler than the old board and sounds infinitely better as well, which was uh, part of the reason I wanted to put this together. I think just less clutter generally, less pedals going on, and obviously the G2, which is just an incredible bit of kit, has all culminated in things just sounding cleaner and sounding more more better why not let's finish on more better as ever i've been chris buck uh thank you very much for watching friday Frightworks, and i shall see you next week for another episode cheers guys take care and i shall see you soon